Yeah, nice. And of course, the, the, you really play well. You play really well. And you have the potential of sounding really good or great. Yeah, and I think it's just that, that when you play a passage, it's there. So just think, how can I make this great? How can I make this sound really great? So for example, uh, tell me the names of your two of your favorite trombone players. Uh, Stefan Schultz. Okay. Nice trombone. Yeah. Pinner trombone, I would say. Uh, I like Joe Lucy a lot. Okay, okay. So, okay, both of those guys are great players, right? What is it specifically about their playing that you like? Um, Stefan Schultz has a way of putting the music first. Okay. Nothing's technical about mm -hmm. his playing. Okay. Um, Joe Alessi has ways of making phrases out of phrases out of phrases. They just seem to go on forever and on. You mean being able to play a yes. really long phrase? Exactly. Okay. Um, and he has a lot of power to his sound when he wants to, but he also has a lot of delicacy to his sound when he wants to. Yeah, he can play really sound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, so do that. Think, when you play this, think of you as being sort of like Joe and, and Seven Strokes combined into the same player. And, and take more chances because you have the chops to do it. Yeah? Sure. It's just being at Joel Essie, I had this unbelievable experience this one time where I, I wrote a piece for, for Brass Octet called Music for Brass Octet. Kind of big <laughs> thing. <laughs> and, and the set of brass used to play it. And it was, you know, my idea was writing a modern piece that used the setting up Gabrielli. Two, two choirs, two trumpets, two trombones, two trumpets, two trombones. And in the second movement, there was, there was a, uh, a chord cluster. Uh, that, that I believe it's sort of mezzo forte or forte and diminuendos, and finally the trombone has just an F, the top part of the staff piano, for about a measure, and then people start to come in with another cluster. And we played that a number of times, and Joe had this part, and every time it was, it was you know, great, right? <laughs> but there was this one night, or one afternoon, we played it, and, and we were playing it, and that note came up, and I thought, I have never heard such a beautiful note in my life. Yeah. And then we went through, we, we got finished with the piece, and the, the piece at the end is loud and everything. And so by that time, I totally forgotten about Joe's note. And Ray Mace, one of the trumpet players, during the intermission came up to me and said, did you hear that note that Joe played? And I still remember him saying that because it was just a perfect note, yeah. So yeah. If, if you can combine, think of these, the, the great players. And I think my own opinion about great players is that they're great because they really choose to be great. You know, their thinking is, I really good is not good enough for me. You know, if you ask Joe, you want to be really good, I'm sure it's saying, oh, it would be great. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can sound great. So just take take chances and play play for other people and and try try things where you go past what what you normally do. It's extend your your boundaries. Can I try it again? Yes, please. Yeah. Actually, let's just try something for fun. Okay. Yeah. okay. Is it <laughs> fun for me and not for you. <laughs> Is, but I don't want to take too much time if some, some other people want to play. Are there other people who want to play? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so we have one, two, three. Okay, so you know that I'm not going to buy you that I'm safe. So. Um, <laughs> but um, let's. What's the most interesting part of this phrase? Where you can do the most? From the beginning? Or uh, probably the phrase we were just doing. <coughs> um, right here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK, so I want you to do it two ways, OK? OK. First way, do it, imagine that you're Stephen Schultz. <laughs> OK? And the second time, you're going to do Joe Lassie. What's the difference between these guys? So, okay. so try it both ways. And we'll ask, we'll ask everybody here which phrase, whether you like Stephen Schultz or Joe Lassie the best.
great. So both versions were great and out for fun. Uh, first version was, number one was Stefan Schultz, number two was Joel Lessie. How many for Stefan Schultz? Okay, how many for Joel Lessie? Okay. <laughs> so at least in this room, Joel won, okay? Stefan's doing me so right, okay? Um, so, um, the thing that was really interesting to me was for both versions, before you played, you took a little bit of time and it was like, I can tell you, we're really thinking, what do I want to do here? Yeah. So, we as brass players tend to think an awful lot of what do I do with my tongue position and, and chops and all that kind of stuff. And we don't really think that much about what we want to do with the music. And I, I say in terms of approaching the music, think first of the architecture of the entire piece um, because that's going to inform a lot of the decisions you make. Maybe something might be, might be beautiful, but it might disturb the form of the, of the piece. You know, the, the writer, uh, William Faulkner, when he would do, when he would rev revise his novels, he would say, now I have to kill all my darlings. Meaning, dialogue that's written many times was really great, but didn't work with the, the piece, you know. So, so think of, of the long architecture of the piece, and then do the individual phrases. And for, how many of you are going, going to Mahler 6 tomorrow night? Okay, great, okay. So, it starts, it starts A minor with, with the, uh, Faces and, and Shelly doing that, etc. Right? Okay. And what? Maybe about an hour and twenty minutes later, <laughs> you have normally you have, but at the end it's just just A minor chord. So you have about an hour and fifteen or hour and twenty minutes. This architecture is this long piece. That's the story. A minor to A minor. But what happens in between is unbelievably great. The problem for a conductor and for an orchestra is is not having just a whole bunch of great sections, but also having a, a thread, right? And this is not Mahler's sixth, of course, um, but you still want to have the same idea. You start big, and then you gradually get smaller. And so we're taking a very small chunk now, but um, you played it fine the first time, but for me, the last time, if I was listening to you in the audience, I'd be going, wow, that's great. Yeah. So every, every chance you get, try to make something really, really great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>